Jamestown O'Hare, look what I walked up on. Oyster, like huge oysters. And it, it's a big clump of them. So I don't know if you counted them. One, two, three, at least four. And then there are a bunch of smaller ones coming up on here. But whenever I walked up on this, it got me thinking that, and, and I don't, this might get too technical, but oysters are really being impacted right now in certain parts of the world. Uh, Gulf of Mexico is one of them. Uh, and there's a number of different things like fishing and stuff like that. But one of the big things that we don't, you never hear anybody talking about is the water quality changes that are going on in the Gulf of Mexico. And uh, there's something called alkalinity. And it's having an impact on the growth of these oysters and something that we could really see uh, making some big changes over time. And so I'm not an expert when it comes to say the water quality, that how it impacts the oysters. Um, but I know somebody that is at the Heart Research Institute. They've actually got a project that is looking at uh, how the ocean is changing and the bays are changing uh, because of water quality. But I bet you he can tell us what's going on here. So let's go up to his lab, see if he can tell us a little bit something about that. All right, stay tuned. Okay, so I'm off the beach. Uh, I've got my oysters and I'm bringing them over here to the expert at the Heart Research Institute, which we're located Texas A&M Corpus Christi campus. You've probably seen this before, but our building for Heart Research Institute is right behind this big sign whenever you're first coming in to the campus here. And so let's go inside. Let's talk to Dr. Shinping Hu, who is an expert on ocean acidification. And let's see what he's doing in his lab to figure out what's going on with these oysters. So these are a few pieces of the uh, oyster shell. They are from the adults. Okay, so do you know that this shell is made of a carbonate? And the one way to tell is if you drip vinegar, which is from the kitchen, and you're gonna see the bubble form. So that is because the carbonate is being dissolved by vinegar, which is acid, is top of acid. Okay. And you know, this is adult oyster. So when the oysters are little, so the first couple weeks, so their shells are made of a different type of a carbonate, which is more soluble, so that is called arachnite. So during the first few weeks of the oyster life stage, they are pretty vulnerable to ocean acidification. So ocean acidification is caused by the increase in the CO2 carbon dioxide level in the atmosphere. That is because of the fossil fuel combustion, deforestation, and cement production. And when this CO2 come into the seawater, so it'll gradually increase the seawater acidity and decrease the, the pH value of the seawater. Ocean acidification is a global phenomenon and the rates of acidification are different across uh, the globe. So from the Arctic, so that's more rapid and in the warm Gulf of Mexico region, so that's uh, slower relatively. Okay, so ocean acidification can cause harm to a lot of uh, uh, animals that build the shells made of a carbonate or the skeleton, for example, the corals. There are a lot of organisms uh, living in the ocean, they produce shells. So I talked about oysters, uh, corals, there are uh, crabs, for example. So anything that can build the shells that has the, the carbonate mineral can be potentially affected by ocean acidification. Yeah, we are also, we have been funded by the National Science Foundation over the past, let's see, about seven, eight years to look at acidification issues in the Texas estuaries. You know, this is especially relevant because it is related to the amount of fresh water coming down from the rivers. And also there is a lot of uh, processes that are going on on the seabed. Yeah, so we have been funded by NOAA Ocean Acidification Program for the past few years. Uh, you know, we have been out to the Gulf uh, quite a few times. We, uh, we took the research vessel from the Louisiana University Marine Consortium, Consortium. So the boat is called uh, Research Vessel Pelican. So we would spend a few days um, in the sea and collect uh, seawater samples. And also we do the onboard measurement. And we take a lot of water samples, come to the lab and analyze with our instruments. Um, and we work on ocean acidification by using the high precision instrument to quantify the acidity of the seawater. And a lot of our work is in the Gulf of Mexico. So we quantify the 
very high level, high precision carbon chemistry of the seawater using a few different instruments. And our results has been um, used by, uh, for example, the marine, National Marine Sanctuary in the Frog Island Banks. Uh, we've been working for the uh, past 10 years with them. And also we have worked on the acidification in Texas estuaries uh, up and down the coast and we have been funded by the Environmental Protection Agency in the past years and actually we're going to soon restart uh, ocean acidification monitoring at the ship channel in Port Francis. Okay, well I'm glad we were able to go in there and uh, see that lab and uh, talk to Dr. Hugh because uh, I had no idea that uh, amount of work they're doing and uh, all that work being able to go towards, you know, management decisions that are actually being made about natural resources in our environment. So, okay, that's it for this episode of Beachcombing. We'll talk to you next time. Bye.